Hi folks, how are you going? Ben Sneesby from Bees Knees Microphones here. Today I thought I'd just uh, give you a, a sneak peek on the inside of what we do and how we make things. This is our uh, very large four axis uh, CNC lathe or to milling lathe. Uh, they call them a horizontal turning center. Anyway, we're uh, looking at making today our CK12 acetal which is the first, uh, the outer ring of the CK12 capsule commonly used in the C12 microphone also the uh, Elam 251 and here at Bees Knees we use it in our Felicity microphone and also our T2 so here we go you'll get to see the machine running today and I'll explain uh, what it's doing as we go through first we start off just by turning off the face and the outside We go for a tool change. Now we're going to drill the holes to mount the diaphragm. We would normally run this with coolant on a drilling cycle, but just to uh, stop me from getting wet so that you can all see what we're doing, I thought we'd uh, omit that just for this part. It's plastic, it's really not that important. The, uh, the coolant, it just keeps the burrs off the tool. As you can see there, it's got some uh, plastic, what we call swarf, on the tool. And that wouldn't be there if we were using coolant, but that's no big deal. There we go, so we just drilled 12 holes. We're going to drill four more. This machine has 12 tools. Uh, all tools can be live, which means they can move as well, or they can be static. So this is what you'd call a static tool, and that's a live tool, where it's moving. It's actually drilling, independent of the spindle. Quick tool change to our tapping tool. So we're still moving, we're still using a rotating tool. We're going to tap all of the holes now. It's an M1.4 tap, so it's a very, very small tap. tap something like this by hand would take a, a very long time because these taps snap very easily and the machine can hold them very still while it taps the two parts which means that it doesn't have uh, any friction or any, uh, any uh, extra friction on the tap more so than necessary so it doesn't break the tap very easily. They still break though and we still have to replace them. They don't last very long at all but they last a lot longer. We could, we could snap a tap a hole doing it by hand and waste the part whereas uh, We'd be lucky to snap a tap every thousand holes doing it this way. A machine like this one can cost uh, around about half a million dollars. So it's quite a sizable investment, especially for a small company. So you need to make sure that you're making a lot of parts, a lot of microphones, but also that you're maintaining your accuracy because we uh, we, we need to make sure that we're not wasting the machining time uh, because you know every moment that this machine's on is costing money. It uh, uses a lot of uh, power to run. It runs on a three phase. Our uh, power requirements here aren't even big enough for uh, this machine so we have to run our own mini power station. We have a very large diesel generator and that uh, prevents us from giving our neighbors blackouts when we start this machine up and it also means that we uh, are restricted to just running during daylight hours, otherwise it would be too noisy and we'd have complaints. So again, we have to make sure that uh, every moment counts while we're running the large diesel, because again, we're paying for another engine to run while it's making these parts. Here's our next drill, it's called an X-axis drill, it's drilling onto the X-axis. So this is where you would mount the capsule onto the, uh, the saddle, which holds the capsule into the microphone. We're drilling six holes here.
Everything is very, very precise in this machine. Holds an accuracy of one micron. Now, one micron is incredibly small. Uh, one micron means that we can make a batch of a thousand of these things and they would be absolutely identical. Changing tool again. We just uh, drill the hole through with a static drill. Now we're going to uh, what they call do an ID turn and chamfer. There's the chamfer. And now we're going to tap the internal thread, which uh, makes this part here a female part mounting to a male brass part that we'll make in a moment. There we go, there's our thread. Fairly quick, isn't it? I'll move aside now, I'm about to part off, and I'll get hit with the part, otherwise it uh, flies out. Normally we'd have this door closed. There it goes, it didn't fly out this time. Well, there you go, folks, and I just thought I'd show you one more thing. Uh, we get to enjoy uh, a very nice environment here at Bees Knees. We're not uh, in the city. We're uh, up in the country, and I'd just like to show you our view. This is the view straight out of the factory. How's that? Beats the city any day. Okay, we'll talk to you soon.